I'm going to just go back for a second to mention one thing, which is because this is an issue that has come up a lot, which is the issue of why do they want nuclear weapons? Is it because they're afraid we're going to invade them tomorrow and therefore nuclear weapons act as a, uh, as a deterrent against the U.S. invasion? I would argue that that's not the issue. The issue is more fundamental, and nor is it an issue that uh, the North Koreans are going to threaten us at Christmas time or, or any time, and that is they want nuclear weapons not because of our uh, the threat of a U.S. invasion, because frankly we're not interested in invading North Korea. I, I, you can talk to any person who's ever done any planning on what you see in North Korea. No one wants to go into that country <laughs> in an invasion way. So uh, we're not interested in that. So what is it? Do they do they think that these annual exercises, which um, they call provocative war games. And I think one of the noticeable things in Singapore was the fact that our president learned to speak a little North, Kore North Korean when uh, he stood up in a press conference and said, and by the way, we're going to cancel our provocative war games. Um, so is, are they really worried that these uh, joint exercises with the South Koreans are aimed at invading North Korea? Believe me, they know better. They know what a defensive exercise is from a uh, offensive exercise. So I would argue that that's not really the issue for the North Koreans. What they have in mind is the following. That is, the U.S. is present in South Korea with about 28,000 troops. The U.S. every year practices not only with those 28,000 troops, but also brings additional troops in to man additional defensive perimeters, including troops from Texas. They bring in a whole, a, a whole supply chain that runs through Japan, which is why our troops in Japan are very essential to the overall issue of uh, defending the Korean Peninsula. And so the North Koreans want to create a situation. It doesn't have to be with this administration. It doesn't have to be with the next administration. It doesn't even have to be with, I don't know, Sarah Palin's second administration. <laughs> it can be any time, but they want to create a situation where if the, if the U.S. wants to participate in a little pushing and shoving on the Korean Peninsula along the side of the South Koreans, the North Koreans can say, Americans, you watch out, because if you are going to be fighting with our troops, we will do as you have done and as you are doing, we will be imperiling your civilians through intercontinental ballistic missile attacks on the U.S. Well, obviously, the answer to the North Koreans if they're going to threaten our homeland, as they have, they have threatened our homeland, but the answer is, you know, make my day. If you touch any uh, hair on any of our citizens, we will turn your country into a parking lot. To which the North Koreans reply, make our day. Uh, we, they don't need parking lots since they don't have cars, but I mean, they, <laughs> they, they would take the view that they are somehow prepared for a nuclear a nuclear, uh, to survive a nuclear strike. Do they believe that? I doubt very many people believe it. Do they tunnel into the ground every day of the week? Do they have uh, enormous facilities underground? Do they have a lot, is their military riveted in underground positions? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. And so I don't think you can make the assumption that they, uh, that all of them understand, as I think all of us understand that no one survives a nuclear war, I'm not sure you can make that assumption with, with North Korea. So they're essentially saying to the Americans, you get involved in a scrap here, we will hold your civilians at risk, and expecting that at some future point an American president, as I said, you know, whatever American president would say, you know, the South Koreans can kind of handle this. We really don't need to be uh, involved with this. I mean, the South Koreans have a very <laughs> robust military force. We don't really need our troops there. Maybe there is some way where we can uh, um, get, our, get our troops out. So with that in mind, with the issue of, in my view, the real North Korea effort, getting U.S. troops off the Korean Peninsula, the real question is, um, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to uh, as the president suggested, he would like to bring U.S. troops off the Korean Peninsula, and that was a very important thing he said in Singapore when he said, my preference is to withdraw our troops. 
it was pretty clear that the president, who thinks of himself as the world's toughest leader, actually believes he can achieve denuclearization through the withdrawal of U.S. troops. Um, I submit to you, it ain't going to work. Uh, and I would also submit to you, it's dangerous. If we are not in, on the Korean Peninsula, the question I think that would come up is, well, then what are we doing in Japan? And if you're Japanese, you would be asking yourself the question, do we want to be the only country in Asia with U.S. troops on our soil? I mean, when did they get here? That was 1945. Why, why were they here in 1945? They were occupying troops, but now they're not. It's just part of our U.S.-Japanese alliance. And then many Japanese, over the course of the decades, might say, really? Do we really want troops, American troops here? And I think before long, historically, uh, several decades maybe, although things move a lot faster these days, we would, we would find that we don't have troops in Northeast Asia. And is that a good thing? And I would argue to you that that would be a very bad thing. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, with respect to China, I think we are doomed to work with the Chinese. I think it is a uh, relationship too big to fail. I think we need to have a better sort of rhythm of, uh, and pattern of cooperation with China. But I don't think the way to do that is to pull our troops out of Asia. And I'd be very concerned about that. So I think when the president clearly had that discussion with Kim Jong-un and was talking, our president, talking about provocative war games, um, those are not provocative war games. Those are joint exercises designed to help defend South Korea. And I would ar also argue that since I heard that many times from the North Koreans, the president needs to understand that some things did happen before he came along. And uh, he might want to think about uh, this and why the North Koreans bring up these issues and why we need to uh, uh, resist uh, what the North Koreans have, uh, have proposed. Because I think if we, um, if, and, and I, I'll say fundamentally, for him to talk about U.S. troops in South Korea with the North Koreans is to be polite about it, his talking to the wrong Koreans. Uh, because that is a matter between the U.S. and South Korea. Mm -hmm.